What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Scott Proctor, alongside my guy, Matt Morris. We're back with another episode of Simple Question, but this time we'll have more than one because we have a special guest joining us today, host of the Lock On Arizona Cardinals podcast, Bo Brack. Thanks for joining us, my man. Hey, thanks for having me. Sure thing, man. Let's get right into it because there's a lot of juicy stuff going on around the Cardinals franchise. Um, I want to start here. What's your understanding of the reported rift between Kyler Murray and the Cardinals brass? I happen to believe, you know, both sides know a big payday is coming for Kyler and the front office is just unsure of whether he's worth, you know, Josh Allen money. Any validity to that? And, you know, what are you kind of hearing about the situation? Well, I mean, as far as whether or not he's worth it, I don't think the front office is wavering on that. I mean, he's the NFL Offensive Rookie of the Year, his first year in the league after being the top pick and then a two-time Pro Bowler since. And he's, he's uh, taken a step each and every season despite, you know, the downfall of his team the last two seasons. But, you know, the name of this podcast, Simple Question, but it's a little bit more complicated answer as far as what's going on. I think at the end of the day, when you look at it, this is, yeah, the two sides trying to uh, negotiate in the public forum and it's getting a little ugly. The, the mudslinging, it, it's happening even though, you know, the two parties, they're playing nice, right? You know, Kyler released his statement. He's not right. about the nonsense. That it never has been, never will be. And then you have the Cardinals saying, hey, this is our quarterback going forward. But look, things are being planted. Things are being put into the press uh, uh, that are unflattering about Kyler Murray. And, you know, until Penn has put the paper on that mega extension, where his market value is around $43 million, um, things are going to continue to be ugly. And that's unfortunate because Kyler Murray is the greatest quarterback that's ever been drafted in this franchise. And it's not even close. I mean, think about it. Josh Rosen, Matt Leinart, um, Jake Plummer was good, but he had what? 161 touchdowns at 161 picks. I mean, the guy turned the ball over, had some nice moments, but there just hasn't been anybody like Kyler Murray. So they need to do everything within their power to keep him happy and going. And I think they will be. And that's not without Kyler having to put in the work himself, because I think where you really need to pay attention to all of this is where at the end of the year, if the Arizona Cardinals fell horrendously short of, you know, building these expectations in, in, you know, through 10 games, 12 games, uh, the leadership, the maturity, the development, that's something that he has to at 24 going on 25 needs to look at himself and, and take steps forward. And because that's going to be the toughest thing, this entire equation. Sure thing. Yep. And, and Bo, you know, talking about that and kind of the fall that the Cardinals have had the last two seasons, it, it seems like it's, a shared responsibility and blame for that uh, Kime and Cliff and Kyler. So how much pressure is on all three in different ways this upcoming season to finally get past that kind of uh, that, that uh, the hump that they, they haven't been able to get over yet. I mean, Cliff Kingsbury, the, you, he can't avoid people pointing out how he's into his seasons, but dating back to Texas tech from like, I think it was like 2014 or 2013. He has finished horribly each and every season they're like there is no like fluke season where he just maybe won a couple of games it was it's been brutal so he has to change that narrative and, and kyler murray is a big part of that but as you mentioned this is a three-headed monster there's three people that are fe- feeling the heat from the way that things ended for the arizona cardinals they were 10 and 2 they were the last undefeated team and they kind of went the way of the pittsburgh steelers in 2020 where they just fell apart the wheels completely fell off um so yeah, it does come down to the organization not having enough depth. And that comes down to the general manager, Steve Kime. He didn't. He has not given Kyler Murray and Cliff Kingsbury enough talent on either side of the football down the stretch uh, that they can win football games and, and be as good as they are coming out of the gates. Uh, Cliff Kingsbury, I think that this, the skepticism, the play calling, uh, whether or not he's the guy that's a leader of men, those are very fair questions. But at the end, also, when you look at his resume as the Cardinals head coach, he's gone from took over a franchise that won three games, won five games, then he won eight games, then he won 11 games, first playoff appearance. They're taking baby steps and the pressure's being put on because guys like Joe Burrow in his second season, guys like Zach Taylor, who there was a a ton of questions about, they're finding success quicker than Kingsbury has in Arizona. So they're not content with the baby steps. But uh, look, all three guys, the pressure is on. No doubt about it. You know, when you look at how things usually play out in sports, the quarterback's going to get the benefit of the doubt unless he's just a disaster. And I don't think Kyler has been a big enough disaster to just say, okay, he's not the guy going forward. Cliff and Kime, and I think Kime has pictures of somebody because he shouldn't be here anyway. <laughs> uh, you know, he's 
those are the two guys that are got to be feeling the most pressure this offseason going from 2021 to 2022. 100%. And I kind of want to talk a little bit more uh, about these end of season struggles, because, you know, as you mentioned, this has been a reality for Kingsbury since he's been at Texas Tech. Um, does he deserve most of the blame because uh, because of that reality? Or is this more I saw you recently talk about, you know, the importance um, or how important the loss of DeAndre Hopkins was down the stretch. And a lot of people, you know, either tend to forget that or just choose to yeah. ignore that. Um, you know, what do you kind of make of the the late season struggles, you know, as a group? I think there's nuance to what I said about DeAndre Hopkins. And it basically was, you know, the Arizona Cardinals with Hopkins and Kyler Murray in the lineup, they were, uh, they were like eight and two and yep, yep. they averaged over 30 points per game. And DeAndre Hopkins was a monster in the red zone. He had eight catches for eight touchdowns when they're close. Right. And that's, that's a huge weapon and that's a huge loss, but that doesn't give them a, a hall pass. Right. That, that's not, but it is a huge loss. I mean, if you look at the Los Angeles Rams, I think if you take Cooper cup, their wide receiver one out of the lineup, they struggled mightily. I mean, they, you take OBJ out of that lineup and they were stagnant for right. what uh, all the way up until the final three That's minutes right. of that Super Bowl. So um, it was a big loss, but you know, I think that that shows to the depth. I mean, as far as, you know, Kingsbury in the, in the downfall at the end of the season, they did have Deandre Hopkins in the lineup in 2020 and right. they fell short. They were on the outside looking into the postseason. You know, he had Patrick Mahomes as a quarterback, for God's sakes, at Texas Tech, and they couldn't beat some teams in the Big 12 that he should it should be a cakewalk. So, you know, I think that the, the criticism is fair. Um, I just don't think where the people are sitting there and, and they're, they're shouting from the, the, the mountaintops, fire Cliff Kingsbury. The grass isn't necessarily greener on the other side. As far as the, the, this point of the maturation and development of your quarterback, he's done well enough. And the other options out there, I mean, look at the nine coaches that were hired. I mean, who's a better option at this point? Uh, I, I just don't think you move off of Cliff until there's a better option. I, I know that doesn't make a lot of the fan base happy, but that's just the reality. It's just you can't you just can't keep your head coach uh, role a revolving door. And uh, he's done well. They've won more games each and every season. Under The offense has improved in major statistical categories every year. Now he knows what the what they need to fix between this past season and next season, and that's finishing. And that's easier said than done. But you know the team was able to kind of answer the criticisms from last season, this season, and now that's the next step. Now, both this drama kind of started. I mean, it was still Super Bowl. Like the season wasn't over yet, and already Cardinals off season drama was kind of starting. Yeah, uh, this could go on all the way up until training camp. Do you think, uh, and we talked about the three-headed monster that is involved in this, do you think Michael Bidwell gets involved at some point uh, and, and tries to just smooth all of this out, or do you think it's going to just be Kahn and Kingsbury and Kyler talking together and working this out uh, through themselves? I don't think he can help himself. I, you know, Bidwell's been a very hands-on owner, president, whatever you want to call him. Um, he, he worked with Patrick Peterson, who was a guy that uh, – that kind of relationship ended in divorce, but you know, he would have one-on-ones with P2. Um, he would have one-on-ones with Larry Fitzgerald. I talked to Jake Plummer recently, and he was a guy that would go out to lunch with Bidwell and he would kind of pick his brain about where they could be better as an organization. So I'm sure he's involved in this. Um, you know, you say this could lead up to training camp. This could lead up through next season. I mean, look what's going on in Baltimore. Lamar Jackson uh, was drafted in 2018, a year before Kyler Murray still hasn't gotten that extension. So they can, they can ride this thing out if they want. The only problem is in the, in the court of public opinion, this thing's just going to get uglier and uglier. There's going to be more and more mudslinging. So yeah, I think that he's probably already involved. Um, the discussions behind the scenes probably aren't as ugly as things are playing out on social media. Uh, it, it makes for a good soap opera for us to talk about. Um, and, and it, it, but it, it creates some sort of fear that this could end in divorce as well, or, you know, both parties could could be more proactive in, in fixing that, but also the ultimate fix of this is just extending him. Um, so we'll see where they go with that. Uh, and it's also going to come down to making him happy because he can get the, you know, the money's equal for the most part, right? You, any, any organization could, could pony up the money to pay Kyler Murray. So they're going to have to make him happy this off season and kind of empowering him with, uh, with playmakers through the draft, through, you know, off season trades and, and free agent ads. And they're going to have to do that. Like for the third consecutive first round, they can't take an inside linebacker. It's like give Kyler a playmaker. 
hundred percent. And talking about giving him a playmaker and, you know, kind of the talent waning down the stretch. I want to talk a little bit about the draft. Um, Obviously, they draft uh, at number 23 overall. What's your sense of what direction they might go in? I'm assuming, you know, filling uh, a handful of, of needs that they have on either yeah. side of the ball. But running back might be interesting, too, with Chase Edmonds and um, James Conner both being free agents this offseason. What direction do you envision them going 23 overall? Yeah, I don't think that they go first round running back. Uh, was Isaiah Spiller probably the only yeah. guy that would be worth that pick? I, th- I think that they they realize the value. And second round's the money round. And if you look at... Steve Kimes brutal resume of drafting players. He's actually <laughs> decent at drafting running back. He got David Johnson in the yep. third round. He got Andre Ellington from Clemson in the sixth round. Chase Edmonds was a good running back. Who's you mentioned he's a free agent coming up. He scouted James Connor saw that there was more left in the tank with him uh, okay. coming over from P- Pittsburgh. So I trust him as far as that position is concerned. And he could go second, he could go third round, he could go fourth round at that position. Um, I think wide receiver is something that really take a look at, you know, if a guy like Drake London falls to 23, which odds, I mean, they're saying 10, they're saying top 10 right. now, for Drake London, which is pretty crazy, but a pretty decent wide receiver uh, crop this season. I think that you look at that offensive line, I think you got to stay on that side of the football, even though you've got Chandler Jones potentially leaving, right. you've got a, a big void at cornerback outside of Byron Murphy Jr. Um, and, you know, defensive line, you could always use a big, some beef in the middle of that defensive line. Uh, but I think what you have to do, and, and I'll go back to what I said before, you have to make Kyler Murray happy. And you haven't since he's been in the building, utilize that first round pick on his side of the football. Got to do it this off season. Or, you know, go full less need from the Los Angeles Rams and just say, hey, let's trade our first round pick for a proven commodity and bring him in. Maybe bring somebody opposite DeAndre Hopkins at the receiving position or the running back position, you know, maybe get crazy. I know they'd have to go cap space, uh, freeing up cap space like a Christian McCaffrey or something. I don't know. That'd be scary. That's a name drop right there. (laughs) (laughs) And and talking about cap space, talking about um, kind of the roster they have right now, even though Kyler's young, the rest of the team is a little bit older, and it definitely feels like they're in that win-now mode. Uh, What do you think, if free agency is the, the way to go, you mentioned Christian McCaffrey, uh, what are some other guys you think they should be targeting uh, to make Tyler happy and to help Cliff out with this, you know, the season ending push? Yeah, you, you can't go out there and, and get a, a guy that uh, like A.J. Green, once again, who had some nice moments for this team. But the, at the end of the day, he just wasn't the playmaker that was going to help this team take the next step. Uh, they need to find somebody in this offense right now under contract. They have DeAndre Hopkins and they have Rondale Moore, the second round pick who had over 400 yards. So that's not helping Kyler Murray. Both running backs are uh, going to test the market. James Conner is 18 touchdowns, probably going to get more money than you would like to pay him at his age and what he's able to do as far as his role. He's kind of a goal line guy. And sure, he, he showed he can do some more things. So you got to look at the running back position. You got to look at the wide receivers. Zach Ertz is a free agent. You just have a lot of things to figure out. Plus, you know, some of that money that you can create could come from the offensive line. So there's just, there's so many questions surrounding this team and you're right. I mean, they are really trying to cash in while they can under the rookie contract, that Kyler Murray is playing under um, and, and they're just going a different direction where they're just trying to spin, spin, spin instead of creating like this nest egg for him. Um, so it's going to probably look pretty similar to what it did last year where they were aggressive and they got a guy like JJ Watt paid him maybe a little bit more than his market was worth and uh, give those guys short guaranteed contracts to play this year and then potentially next under Kyler Murray's fifth year option. That's awesome stuff. Hey, Bo, I think that's going to do it for us, man. This is super insightful. Uh, thanks again for joining us, my man. This was dope. We got to do it again soon. Maybe as the, the draft nears, but um, go follow Bo on Twitter. Go check out the Lock on Arizona Cardinals podcast. Um, but that's going to do it for us. For Scott Proctor, Matt Morris, our guy Bo. We'll catch you next time. 